If you can forget it, forget it. If you can't forget it, talk about it, and then forget it. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to continue our series on 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and what it says about love. One of the things that it says is, love keeps no record of wrongs. And oh man, it's a hard one. And I feel like it's a really, really important thing for you know all of us to work on. I think it's something we all do. We all, you know, store up these things, you know, like we remember when people did stuff that made us mad. And the Bible says that love doesn't do that. And I feel like this idea of, you know, keeping records of wrongs is is what leads to a lot of really serious fights. I'd even go so far as to say most big fights happen because of this thing, this thing where we we store up all these wrongs that people have done to us. You know, sometimes I think we feel like so long as we're not fighting, you know, with our friends or with our family, we think, you know, that's a really good relationship. We don't fight, and so we've got a really good relationship. I would argue that you have a really good relationship if you fight right. The other day I got in a really, really big fight with my friend Brandon, and we're really good friends. Brandon is awesome. I love Brandon. But I I got in a huge fight with him. I was screaming at him, and he was screaming at me, and we were crying, and we're like pushing each other. It was like, it was a big big fight and the whole thing started because he stepped on my foot by accident it was no big deal he did not hurt me very bad he didn't mess up my shoe nothing I, I he stepped on my foot and I screamed at him and I say that it you know it started because he stepped on my foot but that's not really what started it it's also not really what the fight was about you know I love Brandon but he is a little bit different I mean I'm a little different too don't get me wrong but like I've never been to Brandon's house I don't know how they do things there but Brandon has this weird habit where when we're at lunch at school, you know, first of all, he's really generous with his food, right? Like if he's got a bag of chips, you better believe Brandon is going to be like offering chips to the people sitting next to him. Or he'll be like, hey, I've got three cookies. You want one? Super generous. Great guy. I love Brandon. But he also does this thing where he will take food off your plate without asking. And I did not even realize how mad that makes me because no one had ever done that. No one has ever reached over onto my plate and taken food off my plate without asking. That has never happened to me in my life before, Brandon. And I don't like it. It's not quite like stealing or something, you know, like I feel like probably it's not that big a deal because, you know, he does offer his food too. And so I should just, I should just get over it. And so I try to just, you know, not say anything when he takes something off my plate. And I think that if I could, you know, just get over it, I think that probably would be the right thing to do. Just, just get over it. You know, one of the things it says in 1 Corinthians 13 is it says love is not easily angered. Right? So it'd be like, okay, don't get mad about this. Yeah, no big deal. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Well, I think that that's only true if you really can do that. Right? If you can let it go, let it go. But I wasn't letting it go. And there was one day at lunch where Brandon took three things off my plate in one day. And I didn't say anything, but I was so mad. Every time he took something off my plate, I just got madder and madder and madder. And I was just fuming. I I barely talked to him at lunch. And then all throughout the rest of the day, I was just thinking about, you know, the giant buffet that you could make with all the food that Brandon has stolen off of my plate. And I was just thinking, you know, what kind of maniac does that sort of thing? Nobody does this. This is a terrible thing he's doing. And in fact, it's stealing. It's stealing what he's doing. And I was just so mad all day. And then finally, on our way out of school, he accidentally stepped on my foot. He even said sorry. But I lost it. I was yelling at him. I was telling him he was, you know, he didn't care about people. I was saying all kinds of mean things to him and he starts yelling and I was yelling and and we're pushing and crying. It was just this whole big thing because I had finally had enough and I wasn't really that mad about the foot, right? Like I would never get that mad about somebody stepping on my foot. I suppose maybe if an elephant stepped on my foot, I might yell and cry like I did, but not if, you know, someone my size, not if Brandon steps on my foot, but because I hadn't talked to him about this thing that really upset me, I just stayed mad all day and got madder and madder and madder and madder until I exploded over something that that was no big deal. And so eventually we we did end up talking about the food thing after much screaming and yelling and crying and it was not a good conversation. And what I should have done is I should have just said that it made me mad the first time. And you know, maybe not even the first time, maybe the second time. You know, like maybe the first time it's like, "Oh, well, you know, no big deal, whatever." But then by the second time he takes food off my plate, that you know, like that's like that's almost a pattern, right? And we don't, you know, we don't want to get in fights. We don't want to have confrontation with people. And so, 
you know, I think I, I, I'm not going to say anything about it. But really, it should have been easy. I should have just said, hey, Brandon, um, if you would like some of my lunch, that's okay. But I, I'd prefer you ask me. I really don't like it when people take food off my plate without asking. You know, maybe he might have been a little embarrassed or, you know, maybe he might have gotten a little bit upset. But it, it really would not have been as big a deal as it turned into. I was so mad at him for doing something over and over and over again that made me mad that I did not tell him was making me mad. And that's selfish. You know, Brandon is my friend. I'm sure he wanted the opportunity to not do the thing that made me mad. But I didn't give him that chance. Instead, I just got madder and madder and madder until I, you know, blew up on him. So yeah, I, I do think that if someone does something that upsets you, the best thing to do is let it go. If you can do that, if you can let it go, let it go. But if you can't, talk about it. Talk about it in a way that is calm and kind and respectful and, and like constructive, right? And then once you've talked about it, let it go. So my challenge to you guys today is that if, if someone does something that makes you mad or, or they do something wrong, that you would forget it. Don't keep a record. Don't keep a, like a running tally of all the bad things that people have done to you, like a squirrel saving acorns for winter. And if you can, just brush it off when someone wrongs you. If you can, just, you know, turn the other cheek, as Jesus said. If you can let it go, let it go. But if you can't, talk to them about it. That's what love does. It does not keep a long record of wrongs. Because if you do, eventually you're going to blow up at them about nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered and it keeps no record of wrongs. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And man, yeah, have you ever had a time where you just blew up at somebody, you had a giant fight with somebody over something that was no big deal? Yeah, I'll bet that that happened because you, you know, had a, a running tally. You had kept a record of all the wrong things that that person had done. And then finally it was like, now's the time we're gonna fight about this. But if instead you talk about things when they come up, then it really is like no big deal. You can't say we've never had a disagreement because you, you have a disagreement, but, but man, you never end up fighting like huge fights over nothing. I really do think that's the way to go. If someone upsets you and you can't let it go, talk about it and then let it go. I'm not saying that it's easy to, to bring it up when people hurt your feelings, but if you can, then you can avoid these giant fights over nothing. You end up having lots of little hard conversations instead of one gigantic, terrible fight. A fight that leaves people crying, a fight that hurts people's feelings in a way that, that you never even intended to hurt their feelings. It's the sort of thing that ruins friendships. Love keeps no record of wrongs.